humanoid robots, the epitome of cutting edge technology. Japan leads the world in robot research. Rapid developments in this field have produced humanoid robots that not only move just like us, but can even decide for themselves how to move. Some newer robots even have distinct personalities. My name is Maruro. What do Japanese people think about these robots? Today's designers are building a future where robots will be part of everyone's lives. Dreaming of a future society where we live closely with robots that make life better for us. Tatsuya Matsui is a leading robot designer. His goal is to design robots that will actively make life more pleasant and comfortable. He focuses on making robots that are friendly and comfortable to be around. I made Posey 90 centimeters tall, about the same height as a three-year-old. I made her so small because it's only natural to feel a bit intimidated by a big robot coming close to you. If we're going to have a society where we live alongside robots, it's important that they don't seem threatening. Posey can't talk. She can't dance either. All she does is carry a bunch of flowers. But she delights everyone with her charming presence. Posey has even appeared on the covers of leading design magazines. For more than a decade, Matsui was a lone voice promoting the importance of bringing a design perspective to robot development. The very first project he was involved in was called Pino. This was inspired by the story of Pinocchio, a character who doesn't know whether he is human or puppet, and sets off on a journey to discover his identity. Matsui gave Pino Pinocchio's long nose to symbolize that robots could also be searching for the meaning of their existence. Rather than pursuing technological innovation and functionality, Matsui is more interested in creating robots with a distinctive character. In the beginning, I was feeling my way in the dark. Everyone said there was no need for designers like me in robot research. But I believe designers have a vital role in making robots fit into human society. What is the key to designing robots that can live comfortably alongside people? Astro Boy was the very first Japanese anime to feature robots. There have been countless robotic heroes since. That first hero, Astro Boy, used his superhuman powers to help people and fight injustice. The series depicted an ideal relationship between humans and robots. In 1970, Japan hosted its very first expo in Osaka. One of the main attractions, hugely popular with kids of all ages, was a giant robot. Robots now symbolized the best of science and technology, and would from then on be seen by the Japanese as part of the effort to realize an affluent lifestyle. Almost all of today's scientists grew up watching Astro Boy, dreaming of creating robots who would be strong and kind like their hero. Once developed, early humanoid robots still took 45 seconds to walk just a few centimeters. Through trial and error, scientists gradually improved the performance of humanoid robots. In addition to advancing the technology, a lot of thought was put into making them look less like machines. 
Today, half a century since the birth of Astro Boy, Japan's humanoid robots can now move almost as well as we do. Matsui's search for a way for humanoid robots to play a more active role in society led him to this. Thinking about the first step toward taking robots out of the lab and introducing them into society, I hit upon the idea of using them to replace the mannequins in fashion boutiques. I thought developing a mannequin robot would be an easy way to gain public acceptance. So Matsui began developing a mannequin-type robot. But for it to be accepted, he realized it had to move gracefully and have the looks and proportions of a top model. It took him two years to complete Pallet. In addition to being able to effortlessly strike beautiful eye-catching poses, Pallet has a function only found in advanced robots. Its CCD camera enables it to sense when someone is present. It can recognize what has caught their attention. Through this, Pallet gradually learns which poses are more appealing to people. The robots we now have in the 21st century have incredibly fine motor coordination, and almost all of them have artificial intelligence. Design concepts now play an increasingly important role in making a reality out of ideas we haven't even been able to consider previously. What sort of social needs can we expect humanoid robots to fulfill? The world of fashion gives us a glimpse of the possibilities. An unusual research project is studying the relationship between humans and robots. Professor Okada specializes in robots and cognitive science, the study of forms and behavior that make people want to communicate with robots. Here's one example. See the way the robot wobbles a bit, as if it's struggling to stand. This makes it look vulnerable, and people naturally want to reach out and help it. One of the defining things about robots is that they're self-sufficient. They can act and move without human assistance. But we think it makes a robot more interesting if it appears to be a little vulnerable and in need of help. See how awkwardly it moves? The wobbly movement is the important point. We put springs into the vertebrae to create this action, which is intended to make it seem alive. Projecting a sense of vulnerability like it does, in fact, makes the robot much more appealing to people. Our mind goes, this robot isn't human, but it doesn't feel like a machine either. Instead, we start to see it as a completely new life form. By walking awkwardly, the robot shows itself to be weaker than us. Such revealed weakness causes us to develop a deeper emotional connection with it, says Okada. To demonstrate this theory, for the past three years, he's been carrying out a rather unique project. It involves the use of these trash cans, which in fact are robots. What is the aim of the project? We're going to make a trial to see how children react towards this robot trash can. When it's stationary, it's just an object. But once you see it start to move, it seems to take on a life of its own. I'm really interested in what effect this will produce in the children. The trash can is equipped with an artificial intelligence system and it has sensors to search for litter as it moves around. Let's see what happens when these robots are placed in a crowd of children.
What does the children's behavior tell you? The children are being quite boisterous. They aren't showing any respect to the robots. Some of them are hitting and shaking them, while others watch from a safe distance. They're trying to figure out what they are. I'm interested in how children regulate the physical and emotional distance between themselves and the robots. I'm also watching how the way the robots interact with them influences how they think about the robots. What do the children think of the trash can robots? They can move around and search for trash, but there's nothing they can do when they find some. See how it looks down as if asking for help. By seeming weak, these robots inspire people to reach out and respond. Professor Okada's vulnerable robots may well be the best able to establish a close relationship with humans. We're seeing many new ideas for robots that can play a role in society. Palro was designed to communicate by singing and dancing. He's become very popular with certain groups of people. Palro has learned how to endear himself to the elderly and is now bringing comfort and cheer to people living in nursing homes.